we're so blessed that Zoran is with us this weekend. And uh, we look forward to just what God's put in his heart to share over us, over Dallas, Fort Worth, and what's being unlocked in the realms in this season. So with that, bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. I am very few times in my life uh, speechless or not knowing what to say, you know. Uh, there are so many things that I know. I mean, like when you're a prophetic, you expect things or better to say, you know certain things will happen. You don't know everything, but you know most of the things which, which will happen. But this one I didn't saw. So, so that's why I, and I'm a person who likes surprises, you know, like uh, even sometimes, and it sounds bad, you know, to say it like that, because sometimes some people will say, I wish that God would speak to me. I wish that I have a dream. I wish that I have a vision. I wish that I have some kind of command. And then on the other hand, I tell them, like many times the angel will come next to me and they will, they will say something and they will start their conversation. I will say, shh, it's okay. Let me be surprised. Let's, let, let it be more interesting, you know, let me not know what, what is going to come, you know. And I know it sounds arrogant, but really, like, when you get familiar with the, with the spirit realm, things become very visible. They become very obvious, or they become very presented in front of you. And let me say this, often we think that God is a God of mystery uh, and, and hidden things, and He is, uh, or He was, better to say, until the Holy Spirit came on the earth. Then all these things were revealed to us. And, and as much as we can think like, well, I didn't know that that will happen that day. Now, to compare truth and details, or better to say certain circumstances is not fair. Because what we want to do is, or what, what, what we want to understand is that the Holy Spirit revealed already to us the truth. Or better to say, we have seen the truth and we know what it is. Now, the, that's what I'm saying, comparing the truth with small details, which are, which are like daily or, or they're just moments in time, it's not fair. Because someone will say, well, I, I didn't know that this will happen today. And then I said, so so what? Because in our greatest, um, how should I say, revealing to us was the understanding of who Jesus is, or better to say, who the Father is. And everything started when Jesus started to, uh, his ministry, and after a while, Philip comes to him, because Jesus is speaking about the Father, the Father, my Father, my Father. Now, you have to understand that in the Jewish culture, or better to say, in that period of time when the rabbis will speak uh, and teach and explain. And they will even pray. But they will always pray prayers which are either written by someone uh, before them. Or they will find something in the, in the Old Testament and they will read from that one. But even when they will pray uh, by, by their heart, which was rare they would never refer to God as a father. Jesus was one of the first one, if not the first rabbi, who would call and pray towards God and say, Father. Now you have to understand to us that's normal because we are used to that. We know, what we, you know, we are raised like that. But to all these disciples, for them to hear the rabbi praying, they expected that he would just say, God Almighty or God in heaven, or, or something of that kind. And there is Jesus starting his prayer language, or his, his words were, Father. So obviously they listened to Jesus saying, the Father, the Father, the Father. Finally, Philip says, you speak so much about the Father. Could you tell us, or could you reveal it to us, or could you show us the Father? Meaning, where is he? Is it on that side? Like, is it on the right side or is it on the left side? Is it, is it east or is it west? And Jesus says, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. And that's where the revelation, the biggest revelation that we could ever receive was to see or to recognize who the Father is or to recognize that Jesus brought the fullness of the Father. So to us, there is no secrets like that, or, or better to say, the revelation already happened. It's not that we are waiting for other 
uh, bigger revelations. No, the biggest revelation already happened in our lives. Now we are just learning how to get into the the depths, or better to say, into the details of that revelation. Now someone says, like, give me a verse for that. Okay, I will give you a verse for that. Um, if you go to 1 Corinthians, and I don't know if you in the back can find the verses, uh, just, just for the sake so we can see them. So, so let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. Let's go to that one. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. Now here, there is, a, there is one verse which is actually spoken or quoted by Paul, but actually it's not Paul saying this. It's actually an Old Testament quotation. Actually, three prophets ask this same question, or better to say, they, they, uh, they prophesy about this, uh, or they spoke about this, that one day it will come. Okay, so 1 Corinthians um, uh, uh, 2nd 9. Two nine. This is this is what the scripture says. Things uh, things that they have never been, things never discovered or heard of before, things beyond our ability to imagine. They are the many things of God has in store for all uh, His lovers. Now this translation that uh, took me off uh, guard. Uh, it's a, it's like I like it, but what I'm used to quote is this: For what ears haven't heard, and what eyes haven't seen. And what have not entered into a human heart, such things God have prepared for those that he loves. Or some translation says as those that who love him. Okay, so this is not Paul speaking. This is an Old Testament revelation of one of the prophets who says, For what eyes have never seen, what ears have never heard, and even the human heart could never understand, such things, those things God have prepared. Now, you can have your own theological system or belief system and say, wow, we are still waiting for those things to happen. You know, like one day when Jesus appears, when he comes, he is going to show us which are those things. And that makes us to be exactly asking, like Philip, like where, where are those things? Where, when will that happen? Like, so, so instead of us, being in a mode of just waiting and in a way ex expecting something, the Holy Spirit, or better to say Paul, give us the answer. Do you know where is the answer? The answer is in the next verse. Verse 10, where it says, And all those things are already revealed to us by the Holy Spirit. So, Instead of just waiting and thinking that maybe one day we will understand those things, Paul gave us the answer to this question which was asked, asked 2,000 years ago before even Jesus came. And the prophets were asking like, what are those things? How do they look like? And now when the Holy Spirit came into, into our reality... He says he already revealed them. With other words, whatever the Holy Spirit revealed, it's already within you, actually. Because if you read the next eight verses of that, of that chapter, it speaks, it compares what it is in a, in a human uh, heart, what it is in God's heart. And then it says, for it's the Holy Spirit who searches the deep things of God and he reveals them. So it's the same Holy Spirit who search those deep things and then he reveals them and it's the, that same Holy Spirit who lives inside you. So for us to walk on this earth, to, to us to live this daily life thinking like we don't know much about God. You know, one day we will understand and, and maybe one day we will understand but that's a wrong expectation. Do you understand that the wrong expectation can create a wrong belief? Do you know that if someone, if someone teach you to expect something, you will live aligned to that expectation? But what if that expectation is wrong? It will create a wrong belief system in you. So you, so you will live wrong. You will believe wrong all your life expecting something to happen which have already happened. 
You understand? So, so we are not in some kind of dissolution, not knowing what is happening, not understanding what is happening. No, we have the Holy Spirit who reveals to us the truth. He, he, Jesus says about him, he is the paracletos. You know what is interesting? Today I will, I will throw at you a little bit, a few Greek words. Is that okay? Like, uh, like a New Testament uh, uh, Greek words. And uh, uh, Jesus, this is interesting. Jesus speaks about the Holy Spirit. So the first time the Holy, uh, Jesus reveals uh, the Holy Spirit, he calls him with this Greek name. Or, or actually in, in the Greek it says parakletos or parakletios. Okay, which means there is two Greek words, para, from there we get our parallel or someone who walks with you or around you or within you or over you or before you. So that is para and then you have the kletos or kletios which means actually there are four or five different words, meanings in the word kletos. It's a complex complex word and Jesus just uses that word out of all the words he says that one I want to use about the Holy Spirit and the, the word kletos means not just one thing it means comforter it means protector it means advocate it means encourager it means someone who stands for you and Jesus chooses to use that word a complex, complex word, and to say this one, which is of the same kind as me, of the same nature as me, when I leave, he will come. But he so he has such a he's so complex that I, I will use one word which is with five meanings, and he says it's the paracletos, and the reason why Jesus calls him like that because he knows him personally. Now, let me tell you another thing about our favorite writers of the New Testament. Do you know that all the writers, including Paul and Peter and John and, and you know, whoever was there from the disciples, anytime they would mention the name of the Holy Spirit, do you know which words did they used? They never used the parakletos. They used another Greek word for the Holy Spirit, which is agios pneuma, which is agios is holy and pneuma is a spirit. Now, what, what, why do I explain you this? Because the disciples were still learning the nature and the personality of the Holy Spirit. And that's why they call him by his technical name, the Holy Spirit. Well, Jesus says, no, let me tell you his essence. He is the paracletos. I mean, he is a comforter. He is, he is the one who, you understand the difference? It took them time. And they still called him by his technical name. You know, yes, we know this spirit. It's a Holy Spirit. He is the Holy Spirit. But Jesus calls him because he knows him. He calls him by the, the reality of who he is. So knowing the Holy Spirit or walking with the Holy Spirit, you will experience something that other people who are still believers, they said, yeah, we have heard about the Holy Spirit. But as you walk with him, you know him personally. And you know things of him as, as he is. So don't just know things about him, but know things of him as he is. You know, this morning I woke up, three in the morning. And, uh, uh, and I don't know how much time do I have. You know, you, 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 have, to, you have to show a sign or, or roll around or, or something. I don't know what you do when you say, it's enough now, you know. Um, but... Uh, but I woke up three, 3 in the morning, and actually Rebecca asked me yesterday, said, do you know what you're going to preach? And I was so relaxed. I said, no. <laughs> I mean, if you, if you know me, you know, like as, as my wife says, she says this to me. Like she says, Zoran, you're so relaxed. And I am. And she says, you make everyone nervous. <laughs> because you, I mean, like, you cannot be so relaxed. I said, I can I actually can. I can be so relaxed that I will make you nervous. And, uh, and <laughs> so I truly didn't know what I'm going to speak today. I didn't. I mean, like other preachers will say, I need to prepare and pray. You know, I know of a guy for, who prepares for nine months one preaching. Nine months. I said like, wow, God bless him, you know, nine months. You know, I mean, it's like pregnancy test, you know. Anyway, so... so um, <laughs> it, it takes nine months for a baby to be born, you know. Anyway, so, so three in the morning, I wake up, 
and I hear so clearly, I just heard so clearly this passage, which I believe it's that I should speak about that one today. And it's this pass, or it's not just one passage, but I heard Paul speaking to Timothy, and, and this is First Timothy 4:16, where, where Paul says to Timothy, "Hey Timothy, pay attention." To this, and then he explained what to pay attention. But I clearly heard the word pay attention. So I would like to speak a little bit about what does it mean to pay attention. Okay, I don't know, I don't know if this is a familiar word for you, if you if you hear it often or you don't hear it, uh, but I believe that it's it's good for you and I to pay attention this morning about the things which are already happened. And the things which are going to be said and what is, and, and what is happening right now, okay? Um, it is very important for us as believers to pay attention to the things of the Spirit, okay? So it's one thing that we have now revelation about the Holy Spirit. We have a revelation about Jesus. We know about the Father. Like that's why we actually speak to the Father, if we didn't know who the Father is, we wouldn't speak to Him. If we didn't know who Jesus is, we wouldn't speak about, to Him. We would say, well, that one who is Lord over things, or that one who is up in heaven. But you and I, we, we, we make a distinction, or we are very specific when we say, I speak to you, Father, I speak to you, Jesus, I speak to you, Holy Spirit. That means, I don't know if you have ever thought of this, that means that you actually have discern or you are discerning what is what now to me one of the how should I say of the base uh, foundational verses for us as spiritual beings or spirit man it's Hebrews chapter 5 verse 14 Hebrews chapter 5 verse 14 and this is what it says it says for the solid food it's for the mature ones those who by training of their senses have learned to distinguish between good and evil. Now, just in this verse, I mean, there is like at least five different things which I can go on for hours and explain you. I will pick up two. It says, the solid food. So that's very important. The solid food. What is solid food? Well, if you read chapter 5 and chapter 6, Paul, or the writer of the, of the Hebrews, he speaks about milk and hard or, or solid food. Now, you can stay on your revelation that you are saved. You can stay on the revelation that you uh, experience something incredible. Uh, or you can say, listen, I know that I have the revelation, you know, that Jesus Christ is the Savior. And I know that I experience something which is called salvation. But I want to know more. I want to experience more and I want to learn more. Now, this is the biggest problem that I have seen, not just, I mean, in any, any nation or, or, or in the Christian world. This is the biggest problem. Follow this. Someone comes and, and let's imagine this is the door. And, uh, and someone tells you, you know, you need to enter, you know, into this door because Jesus is the door. You know, so they tell you about the door. Jesus calls himself the door, okay? So they tell you about salvation, they tell you about the good news, and then you accept that good news. And now they say, now you can enter, okay? That's what Jesus told to Nicodemus. Not to my Nicodemus, but to the Nicodemus in, in 2,000 years ago. If you read John chapter 3, verse 3 and verse 5, Jesus speaks to Nicodemus and tells to him, unless you are born from above, you cannot see the kingdom of God. In other words, you cannot see that there is a door. Okay? You cannot see it. And then he says, the, the verse 5, he says, unless you are born from a, from a spirit and water, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. So what happens when you and I testify to people, the, the Holy Spirit, the grace of God first shows them the door and then they, uh, and then they show them how to enter. Okay? So there's two things, seeing and entering. Okay? You have to make a difference between the verses. You cannot just say, uh, you know, it's the same. No, it's not the same. I know too many people who have seen the door, but they don't want to enter. They say, yeah, we see that Jesus is Savior, but we don't want to enter. A friend of mine, hold the finger on this one. A friend of mine went to Africa. 
to this to this really unusual, peculiar uh, uh, tribe who were so spiritual. I mean, they were so spiritual that to them, the spirit realm as, as it was as same as the natural. I mean, they communicated with spirits constantly, all the time. So my friend was trying to kind of like, you know, to impress them spiritually. And then they would say, yeah, we see this, we see that. They know everything. So he couldn't impress them. I mean, he tried to prophesy. He tried to tell them some of those, those you know, like small stories. And they were like, no, like it, we are not impressed by that. So he was thinking, like, what, what, how should I impress them? How, no, how should I get their attention? That's what he was thinking. How to get their attention? Because he told them, Jesus, you know, I mean, he told them, like, you know, the, but he, they wouldn't listen. And then he asked them this question, a kind of embarrassing question. His wife was like, don't ask that question. It's a ridiculous question. He says, well, of all the spirits that you see and that you communicate with, he says, which one, is the, which one is the most powerful spirit? Is, is there any kind of spirit which is over all those spirits? And the guy says, yeah, yeah, there is one. And he says, and have you talked to him? They said, no, no, never. And he says, and what's his name? His name is Jesus. But we have never talked to him because he is the chief of all the spirits. And, and my friend says to them, you know, I mean, he tricked them. He says, well, next time when you're in the spirit... Why don't you ask him some question? And they said, like, okay. So they asked him a question. He answers, everybody gets saved in that village. Do you understand? So, so they, were, they were watching him. They were watching the door, but they never communicated with the door, and they could never enter the door. That's why there is a difference between seeing and entering. Like, like for example, I mean, I love the song that you were singing. Now, don't take it as a critic. I'm just saying that. Just... Just to be scripturally, I mean, I, I love songs, but when scriptures come, you know, in a song, I was like, mm, that doesn't mean that, you know. Like, like for example, I, it's, it's just I'm saying, like when we sing, uh, we say yes and amen, okay? Well, it doesn't say that, you know. Actually, it says that God says yes, and we say amen. So our part is not to say yes. Our part is to say amen. This is 2 Corinthians one twenty. Just to make it sure, you know, because it says no matter how many promises there are, God in Christ, God have already said yes. And there is a comma. And then it says, and then we, through him, we say amen. Anyway, I just wanted to make sure that one, you know. So <laughs> it's a nice song, you know, you can sing it. It's hallelujah. It's a good song. So anyway, so... So it's good to know those details because they will make difference anytime you meet, you know, when you are doing some spiritual work or exercise. So that's why pay attention to all things which are around you. Pay attention. Pay attention to people. I mean, you know, I have, I have been to many, many meetings and I love to preach. I love to minister to people. I love to, um, uh, to pray for them. I love to lay hands on them. I don't think that I can say I love to hug them. But anyway, so I love, you know, to be around people. I love to do that. Okay, so for me, ministering, preaching, teaching, uh, you know, like being with people, that's really, I mean, to me, it's a relaxing time. Okay, I, I don't get tired. This is the, this is the good part. But then in this ministry, there is also a sad part, you know, which, is, which I call it sad part. What is the sad part? The sad part is this. An angel can come into a room where there is many believers and no one will notice him. You understand this? A person gives you a prophetic word, that gives you a prophecy of such importance that it will change the destiny of your life. And most of the people, they're like this. You understand that it takes someone to pay attention to that word. And like you said, it requires a reaction. But the reaction is lacking because there is no paying attention to what is going on. I don't say that we have to, um, how should I say, uh, 
do extremes. And okay, do extremes. But I remember I, we, were, we were on a meeting uh, in the Netherlands recently. And, and there are many things which, you know, like I don't, like I said, I don't get embarrassed. But I remember me and Rebecca, we were walking to this, just the usual preach. I mean, I'm supposed to preach in this church. And there is this lady, and I saw her from far away. And I was like, no, 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 you cannot do that. And she's walking towards me with her child, and she bows down. And I was like, no, 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 you cannot do that. No, she says, I have to do that. Not for you, but for my sake. You understand? So sometimes there will be a need for you to react in a way. If, if you notice that there is a, an, apostol, an apostolic person or, or an apostle coming into your life, pay attention. Don't be blind. If you notice that there is a pastor sitting next to you, pay attention. That's, he didn't call himself for this ministry. God, Jesus called him. I mean, do we read Ephesians 4.11? That it's Jesus who gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and the teachers. And then we go like, ah, yeah, 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 they are just prophets. Wow. Like not paying attention to what Jesus gave? That's a scary part. Now, you don't have to be like freaking out every morning, every day, but pay attention when there is someone, when there is someone preaching, whoever, and you you hear something and you know it's the Holy Spirit, pay attention, hold it, keep it. I mean, this is what I often say to people. I said, "So, are you reading your Bible?" Oh, yeah, yeah, we read our Bible. So I said, "When you read your Bible, like, does it ever happen something like this? You read your scriptures, and suddenly, the scripture jumps out." Oh, yes, they said, like it happens. And then I said, and what did you do? And they said, nothing. I said, well, that's stupid. I said, listen. And they said, like, and they get offended by me. I said, okay. So, so they said, so what should we do? I said, next time, as you're reading your scriptures, as you're reading the Bible, when a verse jumps out, I said, catch it and put it in your heart and you will never forget it. People ask me, how does people, how do preachers remember verses? They don't remember. They have them. Right. Once, you, once, once you have a verse in you, you cannot forget it. People ask me, how, what is the secret of, 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 of remembering scriptures? And, and sometimes I will be on a, on a meeting and I would say, okay, I promise you, I will only give you three scriptures. And I break my promises all the time, you know. Because, and people say, how do you remember all these scriptures? I said, I don't. I have them inside me. You can wake me up anytime and I will just quote you at least 50 verses or maybe 150. Why? Because I have them inside me because I have caught them and put them into my heart. But I have paid attention. Or you are paying attention to the words of the Holy Spirit. So when the Spirit says something, pay attention to that. When someone is preaching, pay attention to that. Do you know, I love music. I mean, I can listen to music all day long. Someone who knows me will tell you that it, I can go so extreme that I can put one CD and it can sing for six months, just on repeat. I will just put it on repeat. And it will go for six months. My brother freaked out one day. He wanted to break the stereo. He says, you will, you will make me mad, you know, like for six months, one CD, day and night. And I wasn't even a believer. I didn't know about Revelation that it says day and night. And like we see day and night. I didn't know that song, you know. So anyway, so what is even worse, I would listen to a, a, to a non-Christian song. And this has happened to me many times. So I would listen to a song. And in the midst of the song, boom, <gasps> I will hear the Holy Spirit. And I would say here, on this part, it's the Holy Spirit. You understand? It's an unbeliever. I mean, he's nothing. He's not a Christian. But as he's singing, I can I can notice the Holy Spirit on that part. Many times I will actually cut that part, and I will put it as a, as, a, as my ringtone on my telephone, or I will just put it on repeat. So I would listen to it so many times because I was thinking like this: this ignorant fool, <laughs> this ignorant person, he never noticed the Holy Spirit in his songs. You know. So pay attention. 
pay attention. Let's, let's, read, let's read what does the scripture says about paying attention. Okay, 